Good afternoon everyone. Um, hopefully I can encourage you um, from the Word of God uh, in Hebrews chapter 3 verses 12 uh, to 13. Just before I read those scriptures, um, it was really good to have our first Freedom Forum Zoom Bible study meeting on Thursday just gone at 3 o'clock. There was a handful of us on there. It would be really great if we could see you all on there. I know that um, some people have trouble getting on there and so on and so forth. But if, you, if you're if you having any trouble getting on, um, let us know in advance and we'll try and sort that out for you. And if you absolutely can't get on, um, we want to keep in touch with you on the phone or, or any way we can. Um, but yeah, also if you're thinking of joining, there's another Bible study Zoom meeting, Freedom Forum, this Thursday at 3 o'clock. Um, if you know anyone who you think might like to join us, please feel free um, to pass them on the, the details, which we will post um, in good time to let you know, and then they can log on that way as well. So I hope to see you all on, on Thursday at 3 o'clock. But let me just share with you a little encouragement from the, from the Bible, and it's in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 12 to 13, and I'll quickly read it. <clears throat> it says this, See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. You see, the start of that, verse 12, it says, see to it, brothers. Um, it doesn't say sisters. However, I'm pretty convinced that it does mean both uh, male and female. It's, it's to, to everyone who, who believes in in Jesus. Um, I'll read it one more time. See to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. I just want, I'm going to go back to that in a second, but when I was a youngster, um, I used to follow Millwall up and down the country. And we went to a football ground called Turf Moor, which is up north, it's, it's Burnley. It's a bit like Millwall, a really hostile, not a nice environment to go. As you come out of the ground, um, there's all alleyways everywhere, there's a big built-up council estate. It's a real rough area. No disrespect to, um, to, to anyone who loves Burnley, there's probably nothing wrong with it, but I'm referring to the dark side of football, the, the hooligan, and hooligan element. If you're going there for trouble, it's, it's not a nice place. Anyway, when I was a youngster, I went up to Burnley with Millwall um, before I was a Christian, before I knew Jesus. Um, me and two of my mates, who was about 16 at the time, we was effing and blinding, swearing at the Burnley flat fans, threatening to kick their heads in. Seriously, we, we we wouldn't have had a chance, but, you know, they, we, we was in the ground, so we were safe, so we could mouth it off as much as we wanted. Anyway, my mate bought a cheap pair of train tickets. Um, they were cheap. But the problem was we had to go right out of our way to get home. So it meant we were separated from the main Millwall lot. So the majority of the Millwall supporters would make their home that way. And me and my two other pals, though we saved probably 20 quid, we had to go that way on our own. But we didn't care. We thought we was Rambo none nonetheless. We thought we were like the three musketeers, three muggy tears more like. And then um, we thought, oh, I don't matter, we're tough, we can go, we don't matter if we're separated from them lot anyway. So anyway, we walked out the ground on our own and we got lost. And we said to these two blokes, can you show us where the station is? We stood out like a sore thumb because we're from London, our accents gave us away. And the man said, one of the two men said, oh yeah, sure, we we'll show you where the station is, laddie. That's my attempt at a Burnley accent, that's as far as it goes. But he said, yeah, we'll show you. He said, follow me. And he took us down this alleyway. But his mate turned around and said, look, stop it. He said, you can't do that to them. Even though they're Millwall supporters, they're still, they're kids. They're 16, they're, they're, they're like kids. You can't do that to them. And what his mate told us, basically, was that what his friend was planning to do was lead us down an alleyway right into the main Burnley younger mob, about 50 of them, and we would have got our heads smashed in. And what he'd done was stood up for us and said, look, I can see you're young, you're naive. He said, don't go that way, don't listen to him. Go the opposite way, go round the back and you'll be safe. Thank God for that man. But I don't want to... When I talk about football stuff, I'm never bigging it up, never saying it's good. I'm just simply... It's horrible, but I'm just simply using it to make a point about the Bible. I'm not saying that they're compatible in any way, just using it to make a point. 
right? And the point that I wanted to draw from that was because we were separated and not in the meeting with the main Millwaller, the majority of the crowd, the big number, we were separated from them, we became vulnerable and in danger of falling into all kind of traps, right? Which is what nearly happened. If we were stayed with the main group, chances are we'd have been a little bit more safer, a bit more guaranteed protection, yeah? But that's as far as it goes, as far as I want to talk about with the hooligan point. But in this scripture, I'll read it one more time. It says, see to it in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. See to it, my brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. It's saying, basically, don't turn away from God. Keep on following God. And it says, encourage one another daily. What it's basically saying there is keep meeting together as a church. To encourage one another means, you know, to meet up as a church. Like for them, uh, in, in the day that Hebrews was written, it would mean meet together face to face. They didn't have internet or telephones. So that would mean believers in Jesus coming together, encouraging one another on a daily basis to keep following Jesus. Yeah, it, God is saying, be church. Remember when Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them, yeah? He's saying, continue to be church on a daily basis. And and, it, and why was he saying that to, to the people of, of Hebrews? Why was he saying, continue to meet as a church on a daily basis? Here's why. It says, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. In other words, what God was saying to them there. If we begin to adopt an attitude where we think that meeting together as a church, encouraging each other to follow Jesus, if we start to adopt an attitude where that's not really important, actually that can sit on the back burner, yeah, God is saying you are in danger, I am in danger of living a life, getting entangled in a life that does not please God and, and getting in, in, involved in all kind of sin. And why did I talk about the Burnley and the Millwall situation? When I was separated from the main Millwall lot, I was in danger of running into all kind of trouble. And God is making the same point about the church. If we don't encourage each other and stay doing church on a daily basis, we're in danger of running into all kind of sin and mess. Yeah, so it's for our own good to keep on meeting. And you know what? Um, in this time, in lockdown, it's quite tempting to just knock church on the head. I must admit, I got home on Sunday. Um, it was 10.30, I thought, oh, it's time for church Zoom meeting, Pastor Matthew's about to preach, but I thought I haven't found out about Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. Maybe I'll have a little, you know, the main boxing match, I'll have a little Google and see what's going on there. I want to find out how the Premiership's going to end. Are they going to call it to an end early? Are they going to let it play out? Are Liverpool going to win it or not? Ooh, I'll have a little Google. And I started to think to myself, does it really matter if I Google into the church Zoom meeting anyway? Can anyone even see me on there? Would I even know that I've not attended? Probably not. And then this verse just hit me in the face that God is saying, actually, do you know what? Don't be silly, Daryl. Don't be silly, guys. Uh, you know, uh, you know um, we need to keep on meeting together daily. And the, and, and the reason is... This world is, is not a good place, is it? I mean, it can be at times, but do you know what? Without Jesus, we're lost, guys and girls. We're lost. The amount of testimonies that I've heard and, and that we've all shared at the Freedom Forum, how we were lost in, in this cold, dark world. With, we was in a right mess. The only reason that we're still breathing is thanks to the goodness of Jesus and the amazing things he's done in our life. And I just want to say to us all, like, though in this time, this COVID-19 lockdown, it might be tempting just to think, oh, well, it's not proper church anyway, is it? Zoom meetings, internet meetings, mm, it's not really church. I'll knock church on the head and I'll resume it again when it's all over, when Boris uplifts it, look, uplifts the lockdown. God is warning us that if we adopt that style and that pattern and that attitude towards him, we're in danger of running into a whole kind of heaps of problems, like our own sinfulness. So let's not do that. Let's stay meeting together as a church. Get into every Zoom meeting you can. Read, uh, Listen about as much as you can about God on the internet, about Jesus. Get stuck into your Bible. 
but keep in touch with one another through Zoom and on the phone and encourage one another on WhatsApp, so on and so forth. Get as much church as you can, especially in this difficult, challenging time, so that none of us fall away. Um, Jesus is awesome. He's amazing. He died for you and me. He is absolutely everything. He loves you so passionately. So let's, let's, let's not think, oh, you know, we've got a couple of months off, we pick him up later. No, let's stay absolutely 100% plugged into him. And it's worth pointing out that in the time when the book of Hebrews was written, like the churches in those days would be killed for their faith in Jesus. How many people know that's a reason not to go church, right? You'd think, I ain't going church on a Sunday morning if my head's going to be chopped off. But actually, what did Paul, uh, sorry, not Paul, what did the writer of Hebrews say? Did he say, actually, let's stop meeting because there's so much violence threatened on our life? No, he said, carry on meeting together daily, daily. Despite all the challenges they were facing, they were told to meet together daily. COVID-19 is, is a big challenge for us all, but let's all keep on meeting in the way that the government has said that we can through Facebook or WhatsApp, whatever, on the phone. Let's keep on doing church. Keep on being plugged into Jesus. He's amazing. He loves you so much. I love you guys. See you. See you all soon. Amen.